Hi guys and welcome to today's tutorial. Today I'll be going through Leica Icon and in particular its data structure. So how that differs from other softwares and just to give you an insight of where your information is actually stored when you're bringing it into the field software. So this is our Leica Icon home screen. So we have our data icon down the bottom left hand corner here. Leica Icon differs original field software is what you would do is you'd create a job and then within that job you would bring in any of your design information any of your as-built data would be stored in there control and essentially what we would end up with is one large list and it would actually prove quite difficult then to actually identify any of our information or find it so icon works slightly different in the sense that you can see we have projects and jobs so it's a lot more structured so what we can do is we can create a project we can hit the green plus just to add. Okay. And we can just give it a name and we can call it like, uh, like icon training. Okay. We can go to the next page. And you can see automatically when you're creating a project that asks us, do we want to import any data? But not only is it asking us, do we want to import any data? It's asking us what type of information we would like to bring in. So I'll just skip past this page for the moment. So I'll just accept. And we can see that the project that we have defined now, or what is active is like an icon training. So you can see then we can go through the same process. Anything that's highlighted blue within icon is what is selected. Anytime you have a green plus is to add or red X to remove. So I could remove out anything from the list of jobs presented, but at the moment I'll just add one. And I will just call it demo. And we'll go next. Okay, next you see it brings us to a page and it actually shows us a data page. And but what it's actually being displayed here is what information is already present within our project. So you can see at the minute, all we have is a default code list. But if this was us creating a new job, okay, in an already active project that had multiple sets of information within it, we could actually go along and we can select information that we want to be switched on or displayed as soon as I go into any of my applications for this particular job. You don't have to select them here, but it just gives you an opportunity just to display them straight away. So once we're happy, we can press green tick. So I think the first thing to note is that when you want to add information into like an icon, so if we go into the import and delete and we select to add, you can see, which is quite different to different types of field softwares you'll see in the sense that it doesn't refer to the file type that you're trying to bring in as opposed to it actually gives it into a category of whether it's reference data, road data, or control. So if I can just jump out, I have a little workflow prepared here for you guys. And this just explains where ICON stores its information. So we can see we have a project at the top, but what's stored within that project is we have our jobs, which again, it applies a lot of logic because when you turn up onto a large construction site, you're going to have multiple tasks that you're going to have to complete on that project. So it makes sense that we can split them into individual jobs as opposed to having to create a new project every single time. Again, which would just back up our controller and we would end up finding it difficult then to find information or what job a certain survey was done in, for example. So just to give you some understanding of when we refer to jobs, reference data, what is actually contained within that? So for example, if I wanted to export out my job out of like icon, what would actually come out? Well, it would be the user's data. So user survey data, i.e. as built, recorded set out points. So your work essentially is the only information associated to that job. So the reason I go over this is the fact that a lot of time guys are in an active job out on site, they're looking at their field controller and they can see this abundance of information on their field controller. And the presumption that is made is that is associated to the job. All reference data or any externally referenced file, so uh, whether it's a CAD file, an IFC BIM file, a routing file, they're contained within the project, but we have the ability to display them within any of our jobs. So if I want to export out my job, the only thing that's going to come out is my work, but nothing else that is visible on the screen. So you can see there when we went to try import, it asks us what type of information we want to bring in. So the first option was reference data. Reference data is the most commonly used form of import. It generally refers to any form of data that ICON can actually handle that we want to refer to or use for manipulation or staking out. Okay, so i.e. like DXFs, DWG, CAD files, 
text C CSV, IFC BIM files, XML road files, or anything that ICON can handle. Next then we have control. We always want to segment our control information from our survey work. The reason being is that if we want to set up, we want to display our control, but we also want our control points to be displayed differently as opposed to regular survey points or reference points, okay? But the interesting thing to note is the fact that you can see they all go into their own container. So whether it's a control file, which obviously must be an ASCII format, which ASCII generally refers to any form of text file. So when I say text, .txt is only one form of text file. So we can have .txt, .csv, .geo, or multiple forms of text files. But a control file, because it's only point specific, it must be a text file because there will not be any line work within a control file or any externally referenced text or anything like this. So when we refer to road data, we're not actually tying it down specifically just to roading jobs. Road data refers to any sort of string or alignment information which holds chainage values. So for example, if you had a, a pipe run that had chainages associated to them, you could bring that in and define it as road data and therefore would be able to read the chainage information. Again, you will need an added app, the roading app, for it to read road data, for you to import road data. But again, just so you understand what is meant by road data. So coordinate systems, so they're defined once for each project. So the only time we'd actually have to get involved in coordinate systems is if we were using a GPS with the ICON software out on site. So again, we define it once for the project and that will hold true then for whichever jobs we're using within that project. So I've also attached just an image down here, down the bottom, which shows you the kind of location where we're going in for the backup folders. So whether you are using your CC80 tablets out on site, okay, or in my example, I have ICON Prep, okay, for my desktop software. But if I go to my file explorer, and I go to my C drive, users, public, public documents, like a geosystems, icon, and that brings us to the same folder that we were able to see there at the bottom of the screen. So this is where any of the information that we're amassing or inputting into the field software actually gets backed up to within our system. So we can see there we have a projects folder, and we can see we have an example of some projects that are active within my icon prep license. So I can see there the project that we created was like icon training. If I open that up, you can automatically see you have a folder which refers to references, which is your reference data folder. And you can see I have no reference data imported. But again, if I was bringing reference data, this is where it'd be stored. But the point I'm trying to really get across is that they sit in their own folders. Okay, so they have their own containers where this information sits. So whether it's your control points, your reference data, your background images, your coordinate systems, or reports generated, they all go into their own specific folder. Okay, so this is the really nice structure that ICON provides for our information. Okay, you can see though, we cannot see jobs. Okay, because it's our survey information and a specific file type actually hasn't been generated for yet. We haven't exported it. It actually sits in the database file. Okay, so we'd actually have to export something for us to see it. Okay, but again, you can get a database for you if you want to look at the raw information of points. Okay, just so you're aware that that information, just because we can't see a jobs folder, it doesn't mean it's not there. Okay, so that's the overview for ICON today guys on the data hierarchy so how it structures its information if you have any further queries with it please don't hesitate to ask us or get in touch